One of the tragedies to me is that the clinical research on these substances pretty much stopped around 1970. And for me, it's especially tragic because I really believe that these substances played a major role in the development of our philosophy and thinking throughout the world. And I've given lectures where I've told people, you know, if you imagine Paleolithic people hanging out in a cave somewhere, they probably weren't talking about the nature of God or where they came from. They were more likely talking about, did they have enough food stored up? Did they have enough firewood? You know, did they have skins to stay warm? And somebody went out and found some mushrooms going on some uh, dung somewhere and ate it and, and went to this magical psychedelic space and came back and shared it. And all of a sudden, there was this context for a new dimension of thinking that, that had not existed prior to that. And I think all through history, if you look at the Rig Vedas, the hymns that were written in worship of Soma, which was uh, uh, something that apparently gave visions of paradise. I mean, it was a very powerful substance that was used in the context of uh, ancient Indian society to uh, the mysteries of Eleusis uh, in ancient Greece that went on for uh, thousands of years. It was a central right uh, of uh, Greek society that any adult who hadn't been convicted of murder could participate in these ceremonies held every fall. And we don't know much about it because people were under pain of death if you talked about it. But we do know it was an incredibly powerful experience and probably any Greek philosopher you could name, Plato, Socrates, any of these people probably participated in that ceremony and knew a lot about, uh, a lot more about psychedelics perhaps than, than we do for a long, did for a long time. And in South America, if you look at the use of uh, Teo Nanacato, Flesh of the Gods, by the Aztecs, um, <clears throat> very powerful substance that was used in the context of magical and social rituals. And it was basically lost. The Spanish missionaries came in and uh, pretty much shut down and stopped all of the worship of mushrooms in South America. We really didn't know very much about these substances at all. I would say the modern era of rediscovery of these probably occurred with Arthur Hefter's work in the late 1800s. In 1897, um, he was a famous uh, German pharmacologist and, and physician who actually did the experiments to show that mescaline was the active principle in the peyote cactus, which is a sacrament of the Native American church. He was really the first modern scientist, and not much was done, I think, uh, until probably Albert Hoffman discovered LSD in the 1940s, 1943. And there was a flurry of interest uh, in LSD's relationship to brain states. What a lot of people don't realize is that psychiatry up until the 50s, if, if someone was schizophrenic or had a mental illness, quite often they blamed the parents, a mother who failed to nurture her child or who was distant. They had no concept, and the field in general had no concept that neurochemistry played any role in emotion or behavior, which today seems really bizarre. Um, but back then there was no concept of that. And the discovery of LSD and its potent effects uh, on the human psyche occurred almost contemporaneously with the discovery of serotonin as a molecule in the brain. And <clears throat> it was really when people looked at the structure of serotonin and compared it with LSD that they really began to think, you know, maybe neurochemistry plays a role in brain chemistry and, and behavioral states. And if we look at the scientific literature in the 50s, there was this flurry of interest in serotonin as a transmitter, a huge amount of work, because they thought that serotonin might be involved in aberrant mental states. And it was simply because of the discovery of LSD. If LSD had not been discovered, I doubt we would have had any of the drugs we have, at least not as quickly as we do for treating depression and so forth. So it, in that period of time, LSD was hailed as this great breakthrough with uh, thousands of uh, studies and papers published on the use of LSD, and then everything just came to a stop. And I, I really think that was tragic. And a lot of people say, well, your work, had, your work, how'd you get your work done? The thing that they didn't understand was I could still do preclinical work with rats and enzymes and biochemical assays, but the big, the big picture was missing. We didn't know what the effect was on the human psyche, which was really what we were all interested in.